Hi there and welcome to the YouTube channel for the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California. My name is Pastor Bill Johnson and uh, this is our daily moment for encouragement. We call this, We Are the Church. Wonderful story from the book of Genesis, chapter 33, verses 1 through 11. This involves two brothers who haven't seen each other for a long, long time. The younger brother has sent a bunch of gifts to be with his older brother. Now Jacob looked up and he saw Esau coming and 400 men with him. And so he divided the children among Leah and Rachel, his two wives, and the two maids. And he put the maids with their children in front, and Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. And he himself went on ahead of them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, and embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. When Esau looked up and saw the women and children, he said, Who are these with you? And Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maids drew near, and they and their children bowed down, and Leah and her children likewise drew near and bowed down. And finally, Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. And Esau said, What did you mean by all this company that I have met? And Jacob answered, I meant to find favor with my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what is yours for yourself. And Jacob said, No, please. If I find favor with you, then accept my present from your hand. For truly to see your face is like seeing the face of God, since you have received me with such favor. Please accept my gift that is brought to you because God has dealt gracious with me, and graciously with me and because I have everything I want. And so he urged him and Jacob and Esau took it. Two twin brothers, fraternal twins, they are as different in temperament as they are in form and feature. Esau, dark complexion, swarthy, strong, a warrior, a great hunter. He provides for the family. Uh, they're both the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. And here is Jacob, uh, much more light-skinned, ruddy complexion, reddish hair, the Bible and some translations said he had weak eyes. That means his eyes were blue and not like his brother's. He tended to hang around the house. He tended to uh, be thinking up plots in his head. Some called him the trickster. And in time, this younger brother, by just a matter of seconds, the one who had caught his older brother by the heel at his birth, this Jacob was managed to steal or trick his older brother out of the birthright and also steal the deathbed blessing of his father, which is typically reserved for the oldest, in the oldest son in the family. Jacob had deprived Esau of what was his by birthright, and he had done it through trickery. And the last time these two brothers had talked, Esau was breathing literal threats of murder against his younger brother. So Jacob fled, and he dwelt for many, many years in the land of the man who would eventually become his father-in-law. And uh, that father-in-law, Laban, had two daughters, Leah and Rachel, and Jacob married them both. And in time, he had come to acquire by God's hand all the things that go with receiving the blessing of God. And so he decided to make his way home to see his brother Esau. Not knowing what Esau intended, he sent in front of him companies of animals and livestock and servants, all to be a gift to his brother. When the two finally meet, they uh, meet and enjoy a bond that is far deeper than any gift could ever purchase. These two brothers who had been estranged for so long found a way to put down their old grudges, all the old hurts, all the old wounds, and in time, they came to see what Jacob gives voice to. Seeing your face, my brother, is like seeing the face of God. Friends, you may have uh, a close relative or a close friend with whom you have become estranged. Estranged. Someone who, with whom you had a falling out many years ago. 
and you carry a hard place in your heart for that. Can I urge you this day to do your wrestling with God, but to let go of those hard hurts, to send out a, a, a trial to see if it might be time to make it up. We are meant by God to learn how to love one another through all the hurt and through all the pain, even through all the betrayal, so that when we meet the face of God, we are better prepared to know what love is truly like. Can we hear today the message from Jacob? Look in the eyes of a, of a family or friend, uh, someone with whom we've needed to make amends for a long time. Can we look them in the eye and say, seeing your face is like seeing the face of God. It's a huge risk, but one that is worth taking when we finally come to a place of reconciliation. Be brave in the Lord. Offer the first, uh, the first olive branch. Offer the first gesture of peace and see if the Holy Spirit doesn't follow that effort with a work of grace. Let's pray. Oh Lord, you have called us in the name of Jesus to be reconcilers, to be those who bring peace to the world, and it cannot start when old grudges are held so tightly. So I pray that this day might be a day of letting go and that we might uh, live instead in your marvelous peace and grace, and that we might learn to look upon one another and see in each other's face the very face of God. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, have a wonderful day today, and uh, just think on these things. Think on the relationships that need uh, God's help and repair, and perhaps God can see us through to the next step. In the meantime, remember to wash your hands, remember to read a song, and remember to tell someone today that you love them. I'll talk to you soon.